Okay. Thank you everyone for joining us uh, on the final presentation uh, meeting. Uh, this is a uh, great achievement for Omnena because it's the fifth uh, challenge that we have. So uh, a great achievement for Omnena as well, and for all the collaborators that have participated in this project in particular, uh, generating more jobs and future societies to predicting optimal impact investing strategies. Uh, our partners are Catapult, Seedstars, and Acrobate Ventures. Uh, before we begin with this presentation, um, uh, I would like to uh, give the word uh, to Sagar if, if he would like to give, give some uh, words uh, before we begin and uh, to present himself and so so on with the other uh, with the other partners that are in the meeting, please. Hey everyone, this is uh, Sagar from Catapult. Um, um, I'm joining in from my mobile, so I can't exactly see if the rest of the partners are here, but I think we should have, uh, you know, uh, Martin from Seedstars um, and also a couple of others uh, from uh, Acrobat Ventures. Um, uh, we're looking forward to the final presentation. I mean, uh, yes, it is the final presentation, but I hope this is not the final final time we meet. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, we would love to carry on this project and do more. Uh, so I'm looking forward to working with at least some of you, if not most of you, uh, you know, after for this uh, meeting as well. So for me, this is just, uh, you know, getting to know the end product, uh, getting a handover, uh, and then, you know, we'll take it from Omdena's hands and then try to do something with it ourselves, hopefully with the support of uh, some of you here. Looking forward to this. If there's others from Steve Stars and Acrobat Ventures, if you guys want to introduce or say something, maybe that's a good time to do it now before we jump into the slides. Yeah, no, just on my side, uh, you should kind of know the partners by now, but I uh, wanted to thank you again for all the work that you put into this project and very much looking forward to, to seeing the results. And very aligned with Sagar and, you know, acting up on, on this and, and continuing to develop this. Yeah, um, can you hear me? Yes. Perfect. Yeah, so I'm Joachim from Acrobatter, and uh, yeah, just following what uh, Sagar and Martin said, uh, for us as well, this is a very long-term project, and I think the groundwork, which has been done um, by all the participants today uh, in the past few weeks, uh, is going to be fundamental to that, so looking forward to uh, continuing this project. Glad to hear that, Joachim. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you, all of you. Thanks for saying the, these pretty words. Uh, and thanks for the collaborators who joining us uh, today. This is a pretty good challenge. Uh, today's agenda, we're going to uh, see first the, the final presentation, the results of, uh, of the project as well. And then after uh, this hour meeting, we will have the technical uh, a technical walkthrough where we're going to see uh, deeply the, the results of, of the project and, and everything else. Uh, so for for today, uh, some task reps and some collaborators will present uh, this meeting in particular. Uh, Kenrick uh, will hand the, uh, the, well, he is going to sh share a screen and everything. Uh, so uh, could you please, uh, Kenrick, present the team that's going to present and how you will well, manage this uh, presentation uh, during this session, please? Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. So uh, my name is Kenrick Nohom. Uh I'll be the one to share the screen. So how we'll do this? Basically, it's uh, our final presentation uh, will be a set of slides showing the uh, what our approach basically and how from start from beginning up until the end and along with some Rudy, Irvi and Christian uh, will be presenting the slides. So uh, I guess I should share it now, Mario. Yes, uh, I have made you a uh, co-host so you can share it. All right, let me share my screen. Okay. Uh, is it visible? Yes. Yes. 
So, hello everyone. Once again, a very warm welcome to the final presentation of Omdena's AI Challenge with Catapult Accelerator, Acrobator Ventures and Seed Stars, which is predictive modeling of impact investments to create more jobs and fairer societies. I am Urvi from India and I shall be accompanied by two other collaborators, Kenrik and Samrudhi and later Krishan for this presentation. In this presentation, we will be showcasing the work of our team followed by a Q&A at the end. After this presentation, we will be having a technical walkthrough of the project, wherein we will be delving deeper into the location pathway of all our resources and the technicalities of the project. Um, next slide, please. So uh, starting with the problem at hand and our goals for this challenge, given the lack of research on early stage startups during the initial stages of their inception, because of unavailability of sufficient financial data, the risks involved and the lack of their business history that can be extrapolated, a lot of high potential startups lose out on funding, which in turn directly impact their success. So a solution to this problem can be a tool that can predict the success of a startup based on factors other than the financial ones. Um, hence the goal of our challenge was to create one such uh, MVP tool that can be used to predict the success of an early stage startup based on a list of non-financial, quantifiable and collectible success factors as an input. Next slide, please. So this is the pipeline that we followed for our challenge. Uh, as the input, it was typically a data science life cycle that we tried to incorporate into the pipeline. So as the input, we first uh, identified critical non-financial success factors for early age startups and also uh, high impact factors. Thereafter, uh, for the hypothesis generation part, we defined what success actually is because there are a lot of success de definitions going on for startup success. So we had to take something and that was a part of this step. Thereafter, uh, for the data collection part, we basically used web scraping and also created a questionnaire uh, in order to get data that can be uh, taken manually from the startup founders or entrepreneurs. Thereafter, in the EDA or the data explor exploratory data analysis and transformation stage, we clean, standardized and merge the data sets that we had. We explored them, analyzed them and created multiple visualizations. For the modeling part, we uh, looked at a lot of machine learning models. We also implemented deep learning. And finally, uh, the model deployment stage comprised uh, us presenting, uh, us integrating our model on the MIA platform. So this was essentially our entire pipeline and we'll be talking about it in detail in the upcoming slides. Next slide, please. So this was the approach that we followed as you must have guessed from the pipeline as well. First of all, identifying critical success factors, then quantifying success definitions, collection of data, performing exploratory data analysis, cleaning the data, modeling, and finally integrating and deploying it on the MIA platform. Next one, please. Um, so yeah, starting with the first one, for an MVP tool to be able to predict an early stage startup success rate, it is very important to identify the success factors that can be used as input. Hence, the first task of our challenge was to identify critical success factors that impact the success of an early stage startup. The goals for uh, you know, this stage of our challenge was number one, to provide a list of non-financial factors divided into segments that can be publicly curated using data collection bots. And the second was a supplemental list of specific questions that can be manually responded to by a startup. Next slide, please. So um, this typically depicts the entire uh, thing that happened during the initial phase of this particular challenge. First of all, the screenshot that has been uploaded, the, uh, the screenshot on the upper end of the slide, we first created a comprehensive list of factors that impact the success and failure of startups. Uh, a few examples include social media presence, uh, status acquired or closed, age, gender of founders, previous experience of startup founders, funding rounds, number of employees, etc. So this was a comprehensive list and the idea was that we do not miss out on any detail. Hence, we included everything like even if they were financial factors, 
all the data that we could get we included in this uh, particular phase because it was basically uh, all about researching how how factors what factors affect the success of a startup thereafter uh, we removed redundancies classified the factors as financial and non financial mentioned which factors can be manually responded to by a startup and later classified them as collectible and non collectible so basically research was the backbone of this task and every factor added to the list during this step was and its classification as i mentioned earlier everything has been supported and verified by research papers articles review papers and open source data the links to them have been provided in the documentation of the the folder of our drive and uh, we'll be talking about it in the technical walk through the final result of this task is the uh, below half of this slide and it is a list of financial factors and metrics that are collectible and can be utilized toward the success prediction of a startup this particular output was then used to define success and later collect and analyze data so um here on kendrick will be ta- talking about how the challenge proceeded all right uh thank you irvi so okay coming off from uh what irvi said so once we had a complete uh list of success factors it was important to identify the like it was important to identify success through these uh factors so we had we came up with a task to really uh come up with measurable definitions of success because we along this was going on alongside data collection so we needed to find a way to measure success through the success factors because typically when we uh get a data set it would have a list of startups but of course there would be no column that said whether the startup was successful or not and it was up to us to really identify it so through this step we came up with different uh success definitions which i will show shortly we mainly used research as the approach for completing the step we utilized a lot of online resources ranging from research papers to web articles and we also considered availability of information when doing the step so of course there are a lot of success factors which are not as easily quantifiable and can be pretty subjective so we focused on looking at the metrics which are quantifiable so these uh these six uh success definitions are the result of our tasks uh tasks work and we have features such as operating years number of employees status whether they were acquired or they did ipo uh we also looked at average annual revenue growth rate so latest funding round and website status so we using the research we have done we came across the best uh threshold to determine whether a given startup was successful or not and sometimes uh there are data sets which have early stage startups and we also we also considered that and that's why for things such as the second feature number of employees we also put some qualifying threshold depending on the type of data so this is meant to be a guide to help us really determine which startups are successful or not based on the existing data sets and one challenge that i'd like to highlight is the lack of temporal data so for this fourth feature average annual revenue growth rate Uh, this is used best when there is annual data available for at least three years, and if the growth rate is fifteen percent, at least fifteen percent. So one of the challenges we encountered was it was difficult to find temporal data. We always get data, a snapshot of a startup data, but not really the following year. So that's just one of the challenges we encountered. And specifically for the purpose of this challenge, uh, we mainly used the Seed Stars data set, and for that. we used website status as a success indicator as this was the best approximation uh, it was similar to the first feature operating years it, you could see through their website whether they were still operating after a given amount of time or if they've stopped operating so that's what we used to define success for at least specifically for the seed stars data set 
uh, Samrui. Thank you, Kendrick. Um, for the data collection task, we perform a uh, data collection using web scraping based on the research that we did for curating the success factors. Uh, it was mainly done by scraping different websites that provided information about the startups. And we also built a questionnaire, uh, which was focused on collecting data, which could not be scraped. And it mostly had questions related to the non-financial information of the startups. Uh, the link here has summary of all the collected data sets. And this is a screenshot of the Google Sheet. Uh, next slide, please. This is a table which shows what, from where we collected and what kind of data we collected. Uh, the blue highlighted part is about the data that was scraped by the collaborators. And the green one are the data sets which were freely available on the internet. The pink highlighted are the data sets that were pro provided by the partners. And the yellow ones are the data sets which were available on Kaggle. And then we had our questionnaire. Next slide. OK, so, uh, so going to exploratory data analysis. This was also one of the main uh, tasks that the uh, collaborators have done. So the goal of this task was really to understand the data, the data sets, and determine how useful it would be in predicting startup success. So different collaborators worked on different data sets. Uh, they performed EDA using tools such as Tableau, Matplotlib, Seaborn, and Go to extract important insights. And after the EDA, I, uh, the group determined if the specific data set could be used for modeling or not. And different collaborators also shared their work. Later on, we will be uh, going deeper on one of the EDAs done, specifically for the SeedStars data set. So it will be discussed further on in a technical walkthrough. Once uh, data uh, exploratory data analysis was done, we went ahead with data cleaning data cleaning and the data cleaning team worked on cleaning the data sets that were scraped but at the later point it was concluded by all the collaborators that it's best to use the seed stars data set um, therefore most of the cleaning was focused on the on that data and which was further used for model building as well so the final data set clean data set can be found in the link that is provided here um, next slide please Okay, okay. Um, after performing EDA and data cleaning, we concluded that the, it is best to use SeedStar data sets as it had most of the features that positively contribute to the success of a startup. Therefore, most of the models used SeedStar's data set and the models that were built were, were uh, the models that we built were machine learning and deep learning models like random forest, gradient boosting, logistic regression, SVM, XT boost, Keras, deep learning libraries and decision trees, linear multiple regression and artificial neural networks. The details of these all algorithms are provided in the link below and more, will be discussed in more detail in the technical walkthrough. And uh, next slide, please. Christian, can you stay for? Uh, this slide would be explained by Christian. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, in these steps, in these steps, uh, these steps explains metrics, metrics used for performance assessing of best models. So, in this performance assessing for best model, uh, we have used uh, four metrics, four metrics uh, that you have, you have four metrics that you have considered. So uh, in those metrics, you can classify them as uh, scientific metrics and in production metrics. Then for the scientific metrics case, we have uh, accuracy, less sensitivity, less sensitivity to overfitting, plus disentanglement flexibility. And for in production metrics, we have ease, ease and speed in deployment. So for accuracy, uh, ideal models, I expect to give an accuracy over 18%. And for less sensitivity to, to overfitting, that is very important because uh, it helps, it expresses the ability of model to generalize 
independently of some pattern inside the data. So uh, we evaluate, we obtain this matrix by, by difference between internal and test accuracies. So uh, ideal models are expected to have mostly similar internal and test accuracy. Then uh, class disentanglement flexibility give us an idea of how the model is able to identify each class or to assign observation to corresponding class. And this is assessed by harmonic mean or FN score. All those three metrics are classified or are categorized as uh, scientific metrics for performance assessing of our best models. The last one is and speed in deployment is the in production metrics. That is also very important because this metric help us to uh, to express or to see the, the 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 how much our model, our algorithm, our algorithm are complex, or how much the uh, the algorithm behind used by our model is complex. It, these metrics help us to express, to identify uh, the algorithmic complexity of our model and also the heaviness of the model weights in the output results. Yeah. In this slide, we have the, according to those metrics, to the metrics above, we have here the, uh, the one of our best models. So. In this model, we can see that uh, the trend set accuracy in terms just for in terms of accuracy, we are for this model uh, in 96.05 percent of accuracy in the trend and 95.24 percent in the test. We can see that the difference between in trend and in test accuracy is low, very low. When we come to the to the less to the this. This uh, low difference uh, expresses the fact that uh, our model, this model, XGBoost model, is less sensitive, less sensitive to overfitting. This means that this model have, has a, a great, a huge ability to generalize. Then for the, uh, the class disentanglement, the class disentanglement flexibility, we can see it in the reports, model reports, precision recall FN score. This gives us all the metrics inside each class. For example, class zero, we can see uh, the precision, 0 0.995. Class one, we can see the precision one. Recall, we can also see, we can also see the metrics in terms of recall for each classes. And the FN score give a kind of summary of all those two metrics for each class. We can see that uh, for each class, the FN score is very high. This give us this give us a kind of indication that in terms of uh, our class disentanglement flexibility, our model is also also good. Uh, we can also see uh, for the deployment parts that is a kind of. Uh, just a, a figure, a picture of the deployment parts. But in the tech world through, we'll see that also in the deployment parts, uh, there, is, there is a kind of easy, easy process in the deployment part. And, uh, and yes, easy process in the deployment part. Yeah, I think that is, uh, that is okay. Okay, uh, further once the best models were chosen, which about which in the, we, will, we will discuss in more detail in the technical walkthrough, we deployed five of them on Mia. Two of the apps were built using artificial neural networks. Um, the two of which apps were built using artificial neural network and three were used building machine learning models uh, are deployed on Mia marketplace. Next slide, please. Okay, this is the screenshot of one of the models that was that is deployed on Mia. It's it is built using artificial neural network and has number of employees, age of the company, revenue, uh, annual revenue, business stage, and industry as its input. And besides it is the visualization of 
company and how much amount uh, it has raised. It's a scatter plot of the distribution of total funding. Next slide, please. And the second model, uh, it's one of the, it, it, it is again an artificial neural network model and it has several input features like whether the company was incorporated or not, whether it was accelerated or not, and the total, like the fund, it, was, was it funded? It's online presence uh, through by determining if its website is active or not. Then the revenue model, customer type, country, industry, business stage, number of team members, number of competitors, is percent increase in revenue, and the sum of the revenues in the last semester and the age of the startup were considered as its input to make predictions about how successful the startup would be in terms of probability. Um, next slide, please. All right, so going to the limitations. Uh, so the first limitation, so developing a model. So in, recall that one of the target uh, outputs uh, brought up in, in the challenge is an MVP tool that could take URLs as input. So unfortunately, it's, it's currently a limitation. Uh, uh, right now, it's not yet uh, feasible to take URLs as input. And MIA Marketplace also does not support URL input currently for scraping data, though it could be considered as a feature scope for the project. And uh, also, uh, one of the challenges in the project was related to the data, data sets that uh, we've collected. So certain websites, which would have a lot of useful information related to the success factors, they do not provide free access to their database. And there are also some which it makes it, it, it's illegal to scrape information from their website. So these are like, for example, for Crunchbase, they have a large database. Unfortunately, they, they're free, their free seven-day trial does not allow you to export uh, information to a CSV file. So it was very challenging. And also scraping from these websites are also not uh, allowed. So yeah, and uh, finally, some features are not collect collectible, but are important from definition of, su of success. So recall in the first uh, task, identifying success factors, there are so many success factors there, but uh, there are also plenty which are not quantifiable, not collectible, and can be subjective. So these are also some of the limitations. Um, as collecting data was the biggest challenge of this project, and due to the data limitations, uh, uh, maybe that uh, maybe if the data was more, maybe we could create uh, maybe uh, more better models could be created. But since uh, websites like Crunchbase, Angelist have privacy concerns for their data, and maybe uh, with, because of which the data was not available for us to collect, uh, this could be further considered or this challenge could be tackled by uh, generating synthetic data using different types of GAN neural networks uh, that that way we would have a large amount of data for training models that would uh, be not biased towards one particular class and data limitation challenge could be tackled by using synthetic data which will not again be a privacy concern for startups because uh, their confidential information would not be disclosed and it will also cover all the success factors and can be used to acquire the best possible outcome for predicting the success rate of a startup. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so these are the resources that we referred to during the research of this project. Uh, these are the links to those resources. And then we have the datas, data sets which were obtained by scraping or which were available to us online and all of these are the links of the data sets uh, and more of these data sets can be found in the link which is given below. So before I conclude, uh, I would like to thank all the collaborators who have given their contribution and given the valuable contribution to this project. 
um, I would like to thank all of them. And I guess now we can move on to the question answer section of this presentation. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I would like to uh, congratulate you. As you see, uh, as you have seen, uh, we also congratulate you about this in the, in the chat below. Um, we're going to pass to the uh, question and answer section. Uh, however, if, if the foreigners think that it's going to be a good idea to, uh, to go directly to the technical work group, uh, in order to see in detail about, about everything, uh, that will be okay. However, if any of the collaborators or partners would like to ask us something uh, referring to this presentation, that will be okay. Uh, as, uh, as it was mentioned, I really congratulate you and I really thanks, uh, thank, would like to thank you for all the effort that you have made and the time consumption that you took. Okay, um, if there is no uh, question regarding this presentation in particular, uh, I think we can move on to the technical walkthrough. Um, I don't know uh, who would like to uh, begin first uh, between uh, you, Kenrick, Urbi, Sambudi, or Christian to present first, or if any other collaborator will uh, join to present also. Uh, Charan will be presenting the technical walkthrough. Perfect. Uh, I will make you co-host then. I'm uh, Sharon, do you say something? Uh, audible? Yes, you're audible. Okay, cool. Uh, I'll just share my screen. Uh, could you please permit uh, me for that? Uh, sorry, can can you repeat, please? I think that I miss it. Uh, can you make me co-host? Ah, yes, absolutely. Give me just a second. There you are. We can see your screen now. Oh, cool. So, hello everyone. My name is Sharon, uh, and uh, I'm going to uh, walk you through the uh, data uh, data sets and other resources we have used for this project and uh, where they are located. And, uh, this is the this is the official folder of the Catapult uh, Catapult project. And let's start with the initial step we had uh, decided to move uh, to progress, and that is MECA framework. And uh, this is a uh, this is a principle we uh, we wanted to use, but uh, we were unable to implement that principle. Uh, but all the resources will be found in this folder. Uh, the next step is identifying success factors and. and uh, all the all the weekly presentations as well as uh, the final uh, resource structure uh, of of the success uh, success factors are available uh, here in this uh, in this uh, excel sheet for uh, each of the each of the data that we have uh, we have collected and uh, their contributing success factors and next up uh, Defining success. So, using the using the collectible uh, success factors, we have uh, we have implement, uh, we have started 
defining success and the measurable success factors are available in this sheet and uh, it is located in the defining success folder and uh, all the information related to this uh, particular step is available in this particular sheet and uh, the presentation of that and, and we next went through the data collection part uh, all the data collection uh, data uh, is available here uh, you can you can see the uh, you can see all the data we have collected uh, in this uh, in this column uh, it consists of a location of each and every data and in the in the github if you can go to go to the data collection folder all the data sets are available here and you can go through this directly with the interested data sets by directly clicking on this link and if you want to uh, go through the code we have used for the uh, scrapping and analysis of the uh, of some particular data sets you can you can click on these links or, or if you want to go to the ma uh, go through manually uh, these are the available uh, subfolders for each uh, each type of data set we have used and for data cleaning uh, For data cleaning, uh, all the, uh, like we have designed a, a training data set, like how it should be and all. It is available in this uh, picture, and uh, the data cleaning, uh, like uh, the data cleaning results are available in this Excel sheet, and their respective presentations are uh, are the same. And uh, in the GitHub folder, if you can go through the data cleaning, there will be two two folders. One is the raw data set. Uh, of all the data we have collected uh, for this project and the clean data and this is the final data set we have used uh, named seed start data set EDA v0 uh, this is the final data set we have used for this project and it's uh, for exploratory data analysis Uh, these are the presentations for the weekly progress and uh, uh, this sheet consists of the data available for all uh, for the eda and uh, with all the uh, with, uh, with the links to the code for each uh, each data and uh, on the github uh, you can find these on exploratory data analysis this folder uh, with the link to the specific data set as well as uh, the respective code we have uh, made for for analyzing the data set or you can go through the specific folders for the same uh, these are the data sets and these are the notebooks uh, or the jupyter notebook file which consists of code we have used for them and for model building uh, you will find all the uh, like the pro uh, the plan we have used uh, or the pipeline we have used to build a model as well as the weekly presentations and uh, the results of the modeling part like uh, like the data of all the all the models we have uh, applied on the data set and their respective details like uh, what uh, it will be explained uh, by christian as well and uh, in uh, in the upcoming And uh, the respective model building uh, model building code uh, will be available here in the task models uh, folder. And uh, if you want to go through uh, the same uh, the same data where I, I have showed in this spreadsheet, it is available here. You can go through them uh, by uh, by moving this horizontally or if you want to check the sheet itself uh, if it is confusing you can click here directly and it will take you to the spreadsheet of what uh, of the details of the models we have used and uh, as an additional step we have particularly analyzed women-led startups uh, um, to see if they can contribute uh, to the project uh, this is the uh, this is the data set we have used for that but it is not included in the official project uh, but we have additionally analyzed for the same uh, for the 
for the, for the project and the respective data and uh, the respective data is available in here as well in this drive folder as well these are the resources we have used for analyzing women led startups and uh, for if you want to going through uh, if you want to go through the resources we have particularly used for this project uh, here are the useful resources uh, we have collected uh, to identify startup success as well as uh, women led startups and uh, all the resources we have used is available in this table and uh, uh, here is a summary sheet uh, for all the data source we have collected and uh, list of data sets we have used and the link for all the data that will be available here and uh, the list of uh, research papers we have studied uh, for this project is available here and some of the github report, uh, reports and uh, notebooks we have used uh, to build a model and to classify success or failure of the startup are here and i hope uh, that will help you to go through the go through the project resources uh, in the drive folder as well as uh, this github repository thank you Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you could ask. Uh, not so much with the structure, but um, uh, you mentioned someone would also maybe go through some of these uh, uh, in a, in a bit more detail. Uh, could you please? Uh, uh, you mentioned there was someone else who would also present. Uh, you know, some of uh, some of the findings or some of the final. Um, code base or what's set up on Mia. So will we have a presentation on that as well? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, I forgot to mention the project result folder. Uh, all the project uh, result folders, uh, uh, like all the weekly pro progress of the task is available uh, for each each step is available here and the final result of this is available here and all the apps that have been deployed on Mia uh, it can be available in, uh, by clicking this link. Uh, there are two more. There are two more models to be made public. It will be made public soon. I'm sorry. Like uh, your voice is breaking previously. Could you please repeat it? I was looking for. A, yeah, okay, I see the message now. Uh, that's that's fine. I, I see the message in the chat box. That's what I was uh, looking for. Um, plus, I guess we'll also go through the Mia uh, apps uh, a bit later. Okay, I, I, I'll just update the link here on the top, uh, not to get confused between these links uh, in the project results folder, where you can find the Mia deployed project link. If there are uh, no questions, I'll just stop sharing. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Uh, really appreciate this. It's a way to uh, deliver uh, everything that we have so far in terms of resources and the code and, that and so on. Um, I saw the message of Kenrick. Uh, I don't know of which of you will wish We'll start uh, first, maybe Bernard or, or, or Christian or somebody or yeah. Carl. Yeah, you can start. So, sorry, who talked? Uh, Christian? Yeah. Yes, Christian, I'm gonna, I can start, yeah. Okay, let me give you co-hosting, uh, just a second. Uh, maybe we can start with Viranda's EDA so that at least you'll be more familiar with the data set used for the models. Oh, okay. Uh, Is that fine? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Bernardo. Uh, is Bernardo Revin or Bernardo uh, Layanto? Um, hold on. I think it's... Uh, I have made you co-host Bernardo. So you can share. Yeah, I think it's Bernardo Layanto. Yeah. Mm. Let me try. Mm 
Okay. Um, can you look at my screen? Yes. Well, okay. Yeah. So I think that we could go through these slides first um, to get a basic overview. And, up, and after that, we can go through the uh, notebook if that's okay with you guys. Um, so, yeah, um, based on the based on the C star data set, um, I've been uh, creating a data visualization um, and exploring the data. So, um, this this visualization is uh, is the number of uh, startups in the country, and as we can see, it's uh, concentrated in. Uh, South Africa, Colombia, Argentina, Chile, Chile and Brazil, and I think it's a uh, it's in the South um, Americas. And right here, I made a, a country heat map, and as we can see, um, that it is indeed true that um, the startups available in the data sets are concentrated in the uh, South Americas. Um, South Americas, yeah. And um, there's actually an interactive um, interactive map um, that you can access um, through the uh, through the notebook. Um, as you can see here, um, yeah, it's, uh, when you hover it, um, there's going to be like the counts and the countries. Um, yeah, and. So um, yeah, that's it for the country for now. Um, and for the industry, um, these are the list of uh, these are the list of um, visualizations I made, like number of startups per industry, uh, the median age of startups per industry, the percentage of startups in the industry already in the revenue stage, and the median total funding of startups per industry. And, and there's an interesting insight um, I found um, from the last two uh, visualization, um, such that um, there's like a slight correlation um, where industries that has a high proportion of startups already in the revenue stage has a, a high median total funding too. Um, so let's just go uh, through the number of startups in number of startups in an industry. Um, so the top three would be uh, consumer service, the financial service, and health and wellness. Um, there's also this other uh, category, but I'm, I'm guessing that would be like startups that has no like um, set industry that it could be categorized in. Um, yeah, so then we go to median age of startups per industry. Um, According to the data, um, the startups that you know um, uh, last last the longest, like in terms of median age, uh, would be like enterprise products, um, gaming, audio and media, consumer service. Um, yeah, and and consumer products. So those would be like the top five. Um, and now let's go to the uh, percentage of startups in the industry already in the revenue stage. So um, the highest proportion would be in the finance sector. Um, as you can see, it's um, already at 75%, 75% of the startups uh, that's in the finance, finance sector uh, in the data set has already reached the uh, revenue stage. And as you can see here, um, retail and also fintech is uh, the the second and third highest. Now, um, the, this is the visualization which I made and uh, of the median total funding of startups per industry. And as you can see um, from the slide from the chart uh, before, like fintech is number three and it's number three highest and 
and this chart, uh, the median total funding of startup career industry, fintech is also one of the highest. And like, um, let's see here, ad tech is also uh, somewhere somewhere on top, and it also has like um, the second highest the second highest uh, total funding uh, per industry. So let's uh, let's go into growth rates now. Um, the one I discussed in the slides would be the revenue growth rate and the uh, uh, average users growth rate. And for the growth rate, I'm using median because uh, there's a lot of uh, outliers and the mean would be um, highly affected uh, by that. And in this visualization, you might be wondering why there are like um, three separate subplots. Uh, and the reason for that is because uh, there are actually two um, values that are really high. And I will address it later when we uh, get into the notebook. Um, but basically, my finding is that the reason why this growth percentage for Luxembourg, Luxembourg and Lesotho is really high is because uh, um, so the way we calculated the growth rate, growth the growth rate is by revenue by the variables revenue one month revenues two month and revenue three month, right? And so we calculated it by uh, finding the growth rates of each of each month and then averaging it. And for Luxembourg and Lesotho, I think um, there, there are zero values. Um, and then the second month would be like, um, so like first month would be like zero, zero revenue, then the second month would be like, um, some positive value, which creates like um, theoretically like infinite growth rate. And that's the reason um, why uh, um, the growth, the, the percentage here is really high. But anyways, um, besides those two, like um, as you can see here, it's pretty normal. Um, like Fiji, Canada, Denmark, Sierra Leone, um, those have positive revenue growth rate um, and all the countries um, other than this would have negative growth rates. Um, and there's actually other countries um, that are excluded from the graph. Um, so I removed the uh, null values and also um, the countries with zero um, revenue growth rate, median revenue, revenue growth rate. And these are the median revenue growth percentage um, per industry. Um, these, the reason there's only four is because uh, most of them are um, unavailable. Um, like they have not null values or they have like a zero growth rate uh, gross percentage. Um, so um, this would be the median growth percentage per country. Uh, median user growth percentage per country. So it's actually decreasing. Um, there's actually neg uh, negative values all over. There's no positive uh, values. Um, and as you, as a, uh, as like the visual visualization before, I remove all the null values and also uh, the zero values. Um, and actually in the notebook uh, below the chart, uh, I would like provide like a list of countries that has zero growth rates. Um, and yeah, you could take a look um, later. In the notebook. So this would be uh, the median user growth rate. Uh, um hold on the median user growth rate per industry um as you can see it's also negative um most of them is uh has negative values that means uh they're actually de decreasing um and here are some other plots 
that you might be uh, that's pretty interesting i guess um so uh business stage like in a data set a majority of the startups are already are, are already in the uh revenue stage um and i'm actually uh, not sure if um the revenue stage here is sequentially correct but um to the best of my knowledge um that's how I put it. Like, yeah, so like ID stage, development stage, expansion, and beta test, testing, uh, uh, re pre revenue, then revenue. And under startup incorporation. Um, yeah, so I made a time series of the date from the data of the number of startups incorporated per year. Um, as you can see, it starts to, so there's, almost like uh, zero startups incorporated um, from on the 1900s, um, but it started to pick up around 2008, um, start to really pick up. And there's a peak at 2017. Um, so I'm guessing that, you know, in 2017, uh, seed stars would be like, uh, really busy uh, finding startups and putting startups in the data set and they began to slow down um, for the following years until 2020. And number of employees, uh, most of the startups in the data set has two employees. It has, yeah. And uh, um, the co-founders uh, average age, uh, it is highly concentrated at uh, 30 years old. And yeah, total funding, uh, this is this is the median total funding of startups per country. And it has a really high uh, concentrating, um, it, actually Denmark has the highest median total funding um for for all the countries and it, it it's really overwhelming um the difference between the the highest and the second highest um uh country so like it would be denmark then ireland and switzerland uh, then canada and so on uh, so revenue models um so um yeah most of the startups has their revenue model that is uh subscription subscription based then the second uh, favorite would be like um the product base and then it would be uh, the third would be commission based and so on um most of the startups um seems to be B two B, but then it would be followed uh, with B two C, um, then B two B two C, then B two G uh, seems to has uh, the least number of startups in it. Um, interaction type, um, yeah, uh, it it made it makes sense because uh, uh, most of the interaction types most of the startups has interaction types uh, on mobile and uh, then web and it makes sense because uh, nowadays uh, people use um, mobile phones really often um, yeah and like physical it has like the least number of startups um, in it which also makes sense uh, and yeah so basically that's just a slide and I would go through the uh, the notebook now um so yeah what i did is just like load um the data set and look at um the head of the uh of the data frame um so yeah this is just to look at um, the data to see how the data is like structured um and this is like the df.info um, just like to see 
um, the type of uh, data each column has and like how many not null values it has. But um, this data set is pretty much cleaned by, by um, the other guys, um, by, by the people in uh, the data cleaning task. Um, yeah, I think. Um, and the df.describe, um, so it's, it's gonna be um, providing like basic uh, statistics of each columns like the mean standard deviation you know and, and the quantiles min max and counts um so let's get into data visualization um this one right here is just a function i found to uh for uh to display like um the values of each like columns right here i mean like like bars so like um right here you can see that it's like 128 um yeah and and the way uh, it could be shown on the chart is through this uh through this function um so yeah and and this is the country uh number of stars per country uh plot i shown earlier and um i use median again to uh Wait, no, um, this is actually just the counts, the counts of uh, startups per country. Um, yeah. So earlier I shown you like an interactive uh, map, which um, which you can uh, access right, right here. So if you run the cell, um, this tab right here uh, would open up, right? And you would be able to access uh, this map and has like uh, interact with it basically. And in terms of industry, um, yeah, so this is the number of startups in an industry. I don't think we need to go through the code for every every graph that you've already shown. Uh, I, I think we get the idea of how it is set up. Um, okay. Uh, so we, in, the, you know, in the interest of time as well, I think we could move on. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, so I guess, uh, um, yeah, I could stop sharing. And if you have any questions, um, feel free to ask. Uh, well, I think my, my, my main question here is, uh, you know, from, from this data set and from this analysis, um, were there any key findings into which kind of startups, you know, managed to succeed and which didn't? Was any kind of, you know, I, I guess this was the data on which some machine learning was run on. So what was the insight that was uh, discovered uh, through this? Um, well, the insight I found, um... So an insight I found would be uh, uh hold on um, would be um would be this one so like the percentage of startups in this industry already in the revenue stage and the uh, median total funding um so okay. uh, it seems that yeah um uh, if if uh, industry has a high proportion of startups in the revenue stage already, then I guess the total funding would be higher. Uh, yeah, but then this is this is analysis from within this data set, right? There's no external data that you're also correlating this with in any way, right? Um, yeah, this is only based on the data set. Okay, yeah. So then, then I guess it's natural that, you know, the, the startups that receive more funding are typically the ones that live longer and are typically the ones with more revenue. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess it's, it's kind of reverse engineered that uh, the, the, the segment with the most revenue often has the startups with the most funding. Um, but, uh, um, yeah, okay, great. Okay. Are there any more questions?
Okay, not not for me. Anybody else have any questions? Um, no, I think we can yeah, go then. to the model. Okay. Um, yeah, then I guess we could uh, go ahead and uh, go with the next presentation. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, too. Okay, thank you. Uh, let me share my screen. Okay, uh, as I've explained, I've explained recently, uh, uh, four metrics have, have been used uh, to select the, the, the best models or to assess the performance of for best models. And uh, one of the main one of the main metrics among those metrics was uh, uh, ease and speed in deployment, because uh, an EV model an EV model is not really interesting. You know, you're really interesting. And even model in production is not really interesting. And also uh, other models, some models were good, were good in terms of, of accuracy, less sensitivity, class identity, but EV, really EV in production, really EV in deployment, in deployment and production. The, among the best model, uh, we have uh, two models, two models from Sam Rudy, XG boost and deep learning approach and one model for, from Karim. Then uh, the idea, the idea of the of those models, those three models, was to to assess to assess the the success of a startup based on total funding. This means what uh, based on use on history 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 of fundings, uh, build a model able to predict if uh, the startup will, a startup will raise an amount, an amount of funding above, above of a, a kind of threshold, a certain threshold. So, uh, Sam Rudy will first explain some technical steps in her model, Igjebus model. Then, um, Karim will also explain some uh, technical steps in is a deep learning approach model. So uh, somebody, you can you can go over to you. Okay, thank you. Uh, can you stop sharing your screen so I will be able to share my screen? Or oh. okay. Um, is my screen visible? Yes. Okay. Uh, so I developed a machine learning model which predicts whether a startup would be able to raise more than two millions or not. Uh, it, the model predicts the probability of the startup to raise two million or more and not a uh, binary value and whether it's yes or no. So before I began developing a model that would predict the success rate of a startup, I went through the research that was done to curate success factors uh, that contributed the most in defining success of a startup. And this article, um, which uh, this article, which explains in great detail about how the chances of a startup to move up to the next round um, increases, uh, increases if it is able to raise 2 million or more in its pre-series A stage. Um, I also chose the seed star data set to build a model because this data that was uh, because the data that was available for to us by scraping did not include all the success factors that were important to de determine the success. So the features that I used from this data were the number of employees, 
age of the startup, business stage, revenue, and industry. And the reason I chose these features were based on this uh, success, which were uh, curated success success factors, which were curated by the research that we did during this project. Uh, these are the success factors. So, uh, before going on with the uh, model building part, I did some visualization about where the funding, total funding of a startup lies. And from this visualization, I found out that it, uh, most of the startups have their total funding in the range of 74,000 or 185,000. And there are very few with, uh, who have raised more than 2 million or 1 million. Um, so before, uh, uh, so what I did is I considered the total funding column and made a new column called raised where the startups with more than one, the startups that raised more than 1 million were considered uh, one, like, like that the probability for them to raise more than 1 million is positive and zero otherwise. And the reason I chose 1 million in spite of the article saying 2 million because there were very few startups which raised more than 2 million in this data set. So I reduced the uh, amount to 1 million and more. And then I also converted the total uh, age of the startup from months to years and uh, uh, took average revenue of three months. Uh, however, the success factor tells that it is it is it would be better if we take annual revenue of the startup but since the data did not have information of annual revenue and only three months i chose three months and average and to their average for this data set uh, for training this model and i reduced the remove the redundancy of different industries from the industry column to one, for example, if there was fintech or financial services, I merged them one uh, financial services. I merged them together to one category called finance, and similarly for other industry types also. And further, I performed one hot encoding on the categorical features, which were industry and business stage for this uh, data set. Uh, after con performing one hot encoding, I split the data set into training and testing and uh, tried a random or, or uh, tried a, sorry, XG boost model, a baseline XG boost model to see how the data is performing. Um, before pre -pro doing more pro -pro processing, the XG boost model gave good accuracy in terms of percentage. But if you see the confusion matrix uh, here, uh, it does not predict the true positive values. That means it is not able to predict if whether the startup would not be able to raise 1 million or more. So, uh, so to overcome this, I did some more pre-processing on the data. I normalized it to one, I normalized all the features in the scale of zero to one. And since the data was imbalanced in terms of the class which, in which I divided it, that is, would it be able to raise 1 million or more or not? There was more data which said that the startup would not be able to because there were few data, like startups that actually raised more than 1 million. So to overcome that, I performed oversampling. Uh, in oversampling, it removed all the extra, randomly removed extra columns, extra rows, which said the startups would not be able to uh, perform or would not be able to raise more than 1 million. So by doing this, the data set was balanced, but uh, it reduced the number of rows. So the size of the data decreased here. So after doing that, I uh, trained it against some machine learning models, which were XT boost, random forest, K near, KNN classifier, logistic regression, the, and decision tree and SVM, amongst which um, XT boost gave the best results. Not in terms of, not only in terms of accuracy, uh, which is uh, ninety five point zero two for testing set, but also in terms of the log function, which is relatively low, that is zero point zero two five, and the confusion matrix. Uh, here, at, uh, the model is able to predict some value for whether the startup would, like, uh, would not be able to, uh, like, raise that much amount of money, uh, even of even if it's less than the false negative. 
like which is 45 and the true negative is 37 but it performed relatively better than other models uh, xgboost gave the best performance in machine learning models uh, these are the other, other models and their accuracies and i also uh, from which um, svm gave the list accuracy which which it was not able to predict two negatives here at all after perform after doing some machine learning i also implemented a uh, artificial neural network uh, with nine layers and trained it for 100 epoch sorry 1000 epochs uh, which gave the accuracy of uh, 92 uh, 0 0.92 which is good and uh, yes uh, this yes and then i deployed this uh, uh, app on mia but since the data here is very much less it's like uh, initially the, the data was 4000 rows and after performing some pre processing and over sampling it reduced even more to 3000 so the even if uh, the evaluation matrix here tells us that the results are good but when i deploy it on mia uh, the results might differ because the data is relatively low and i am using a revenue of 3 months but while giving input uh, we would give input of like annual input so the results might differ there but if we overcome this by adding more data to the model uh, it would give like like the right best results like uh, that would be right then so here this is the deployed model of which I, the deployed model of uh, artificial neural network on Mia. Uh, I gave some inputs already, like uh, nine number of employees and the age of the startup here is three and the revenue, which mostly was 74 up thousand up and uh, 184, 100,000 uh, for the data. So I chose 74,000 here and I randomly gave and business stage as acquired and I chose a random industry and when I predict, um, um, it, and beside it is a visualization of the distribution of total funding of the startup. Uh, total funding and the amount raised by the startup. That is, it is the visualization of amount raised by each startup here. Um, Okay, so the prediction says that the chances of this particular startup would be 54.53 and the values might differ if we um, change, uh, it's like it, the values are dependent on each and every input that it's not that only if we change one input it would change but uh, it is dependent on every input so if I make it to beta testing stage it would give some other like then the probability is 65 and um, if I change these values also. It, hmm. Uh, this is happening because of the data because data is low and the size of data is less okay so the result or the prediction depends on each and every factor uh, each and every input and it might change eventually but according to the evaluation matrix this model is working fine but it would give right results when we increase the amount of data so yeah, that's it from my side can i ask some questions now uh, yes um uh, i have a couple of them but i'll start with the one most recent in my mind now um in in this uh, selection criteria i see you don't consider the region or the location you know yes, uh, or yes, the market but uh, yes, uh, a market as in, I think uh, market I have considered as industry because uh, data set had industry sure. and not market and I considered location but as I said that this data size is not very good but, and when I considered location of the startup it other accuracy or the evaluation matrix reduced largely and it was not giving like uh, results that are really good so I dropped it but I also have deployed a model, uh, not on Mia, but uh, in my notebook, which considers country. But uh, if the uh, like, uh, if we increase the data, then that would be that model would be able to give uh, good results. 
Okay, the, the currencies here are, uh, I mean, is, does it matter if it's dollars or it doesn't matter? It's just numbers, right? Uh, the data did not have information about the currency, but I assume it's dollars because most of the research that we went through had dollars mentioned there. Uh, sure. And um, um, okay, the back back to the code that you were displaying earlier. So there, um, when you mentioned, you know, the um, XG boost model had accuracy of nearly ninety six percent. How did you? I mean, uh, what did you validate that somehow, or how did you ensure that this is, you know, um, as accurate as it claims to be? Uh, not with the percentage, uh, because the loss function is very low, uh, 0.025, and the confusion matrix says that the positive, true positives are more, that is 822, that it is able to predict uh, the data into positive class, that it can uh, like raise that much amount of money is 822, and true negatives is 37. So, uh, uh, considering these factors, uh, we decided that this model is giving right predictions, not based on the percentage of the training accuracy. Okay, but so uh, just just to uh, maybe I missed some things when you were maybe explaining it. So you, you mentioned you know after oversampling you remained with three thousand rows of data, and uh, yes. and so you've applied the XG boost model on those three thousand rows to see which ones would raise and which ones wouldn't. I'm, I'm maybe I'm missing the connection here. Yes. Yes. That's right. Uh, because okay. previous data, which was of 4,000, around 4,000 rows, uh, was imbalanced in terms of the amount raised by the companies. That is, uh, less number of companies raised 1 million or more. So if I use the imbalanced data, it could always predict towards the, uh, the data, which the data side, which is more like suppose here in, in this case, there's more data where the companies could not raise. So the prediction would more lie on the side that it would give low probability for every startup which we would give as an input that it would say that the probability for the startup to raise 1 million or more is less because the data is not having more or equal amount of data for the startups that raised 1 million or more. So to avoid that, I used oversampling so that the data would become balanced. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, are there any more questions? Oh, it doesn't look like it. Maybe you, you had another model as well. Um, all the models that I, oh, like for all the machine model learning models are here only. Uh, this okay. is the random forest and K, KNN classifier, logic strip regression. Um, logic strip regression did not perform well for this. And then there's decision tree. Um, and then a Gaussian okay. tree. But yeah. only I deployed, uh, I only deployed yeah. the energy boost model and the artificial neural network model. Okay, so um, you know, if um, in, in a couple of sentences, like what would be your, uh, you know, what's the insight that you gain from here, and what would sort of be your future direction now? How would you take this forward, in terms of the, you know, uh, uh, source, you know, getting source data or applying, you know, how, how would you progress? How would you proceed from this point onwards? If you were going, you know, if you were asked to. Um, um, uh, if you were asked to uh, yeah, continue development uh, on this. Um, what I find, what, what I think is from this that uh, whenever, like when, whenever we are trying to build a model, the amount of data affects the predictions. It's like generally when the data is more like, for example, there should have been more than 10,000 or around 20,000 uh, rows for giving good results. But here the data was relatively low like it, like only 3000 rows so for me for make, giving better results for making the model more accurate uh, there should have been more uh, data and uh, it could it could be 
possible by taking the crunch based data set because they are having huge amount of data or the best way because since most of the companies or even like since crunch base is not free and most of the sites that avoid sorry sorry that provide free data are having uh, legal restrictions when we scrape them so the best option would be to generate synthetic data uh, from the available data so that we would have uh, you know more more uh, variety to train the model and the uh, training would not be also imbalanced in terms of only just startups with uh, startups that raise less amount or startups that only re that raise large number of money a large amount but it would be varied so the data would be varied and the predictions would not be biased to just one class so most importantly for me i consider is the if the data is more we could get a better model and yeah that's the problem and which could uh, be acquired by generating synthetic data okay uh, also uh, can i add something uh, also in terms of improvement uh, we can also uh, uh, as you as you have seen uh, the model is built on sampling sampling process Sampling process mean a, a slight change, changing in the distribution of data. So, uh, in reality, the data, the data have their own distribution. Uh, sometimes latent, latent distribution. So, uh, in terms of improvement, we can try to uh, build a model or improve model such that this model uh, be able to predict without. Uh, changing the distribution of data without sampling, sampling process, because uh, sometimes the sampling process can a little bit mislead, mislead the result. So I mean uh, over sampling because it's a, it's a kind of changing, a slight change in the distribution of data. So our model have has to be able to predict with, without, has to be able to classify or to predict without this uh, slight change in the distribution of data. So that is the, also a, a kind of model. This kind of model able to predict without this uh, modification inside the distribution of the data will be a powerful model. So, yeah. Uh, Yep. Okay. Thanks. Um, so one one of the you know one of the uh, outcomes from 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 this project or one of the expectations has been around you know if we are to provide data sets for a hundred or a thousand new startups, you know we'd want to filter them or sort them in a way of uh, you know the those that are most likely to succeed versus you know those that that aren't. Um, how would you recommend we you know try and achieve that outcome here? Uh, initially, we plan to develop a model that would scrape large number of URLs from, after giving a website, but that was dropped out because Mia does not support uh, taking a large number of inputs or URL scraping. So it could be achieved uh, by if we. That's uh, fine, but that's that, that, that's fine. But let's imagine that we have scraped it through some other service, and now we have you know collected data, um, especially the data that, for example, you know you run this across. You know, number of employees, age, business stage, etc. So, so, if if we manage to capture or scrape that data, or you know, prepare that data set ourselves through whatever means, so we, um, can, we can like retrain the same model on the data set that we have, which was obtained by scraping. After retraining that model, it would be able to differentiate the startups into the ones which are successful and the ones uh, which might become successful and the ones which might not. Uh, it could be binary or also in terms of probability. Um, okay, so um, the, the, okay, I'm just maybe I'm confused with Mia now. So the, the deployment on Mia, it's sort of a one on one use case. Uh, you know, we we can't exactly uh, you know uh, put in a thousand companies in here, either the data sets or anything. This is essentially just looking at some factors. Um, is, 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 uh, are there other deployments on MIA as well to review, or is this the only one? Um, if I can can jump in to answer that, that there um, right now currently MIA, MIA is um, single set of inputs to single output. Um, that's the, the way it's set up currently, but we are incorporating uh, batch predictions, so you would be able to um, upload a, like a 
Excel spreadsheet or a CSV file, for example, and get predictions on a large number of data. Um, okay. Uh, are there any more questions? Uh, Martin or Joachim, do you guys have any questions? No, not from my side. Mm. Yeah, no, not from my side. Oh, so, so I'll stop sharing my screen and um, KRM could explain his model. Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Kerem from Tunisia, and I'm actually contributing to this project as a junior machine learning engineer. Uh, so, uh, can I can I have uh, a co-host access? I've just made you co-host. Thank you. Thank you. So, just one second. I will share my screen. Uh, is my screen visible? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Uh, I will do a, a quick walkthrough uh, on uh, the project uh, uh, on the model I made, and then I will, ju I will just have a, a quick demo on uh, on the uh, deployment uh, on me. So let me show you the network. Okay. So this is my notebook. It's available on uh, the official project repository on GitHub uh, under the name uh, Neural Nets Final. So I used basically a neural networks approach, but my main focus uh, in this model was to use uh, the maximum uh, of, uh, of, and, uh, of the relevant uh, features available in uh, the CSTAR dataset. So I used, I basically used uh, the country, the industry, so the distribution of these features actually was shown by uh, the EDA team uh, earlier. Uh, I also had uh, some cleaning. I removed the duplicates in the industry column. Uh, as you can see, some, so there were some duplicates. I mean, start, some startups had the financial services fintech and also others had financial services so it's basically the same features uh, feature so i did the same for uh, for different types uh, uh, of industries same for business stage uh, i also removed the debt and acquired since there were only one uh, startup in a data set that has uh, this status uh, also uh, i checked about other data sets uh, other uh, features uh, for the incorporation date, uh, there were a few, uh, few startups that uh, were incorporated before 2009, so I just removed all the startups they, that were incorporated before 2009 and just kept uh, the ones uh, starting from 2009. Uh, also, I did a look on the team members. Uh, the role, also there are some overlapping, uh, overlapping roles. For CEO, there are different, uh, I mean, names for that. their CEO and chief executive officer, which is the same actually. So I did some further cleaning to, to, uh, to unify maybe the names. Uh, and then I dropped some features that are actually weren't relevant in this data set uh, due to the bias or the missing values. And uh, my, uh, my main success factor was how uh, if the, the startup has raised more than $70,000 uh, or not. And this choice was actually driven by the data distribution. So uh, it's almost in the middle. And it does actually make sense that start, a startup go from really early stage from the idea stage maybe or the pre seed stage to the seed stage uh, by, uh, by, by having uh, uh, about $70,000 uh, uh, as a funding. Uh, and also, I used the sum of the revenues in the semester and the sum of uh, the transaction, uh, uh, the transactions, and uh, the number of users in the in the, uh, in the semester uh, uh, as other features. So it just became revenue, number of users, a number of paying users, and number of transactions. I removed uh, the other uh, features. Uh, also, I created another column. Uh, 
does make actually more sense. Uh, I used the age uh, since 2020 uh, and, uh, and removed the incorporation date as I thought it would make sense. And for deployment purposes on MIA, as MIA doesn't support normalized features yet, so I just uh, changed it numerical values. I mean, like age, it can be one or two years or three years. I just changed, changed, most, changed most of them to categorical features. So it just became from zero to two years, from two to five years, and then more than this actually five years, and more than five years. Also did the same for other features, like number of team members, uh, number of competitors, uh, percentage uh, increase in revenue, percentage increase in users, and revenue. And uh, basically the, the distribution of uh, the classes was, uh, the, the decision actually was made, uh, it was driven by some maybe research, and it's more by intuition since uh, the time limit was close and uh, we didn't have enough time to do further research. Uh, for the model, uh, I split the data, 20-80% uh, to 80% percent for training and 20 percent for validation i use the deep learning approach based on uh, two layers and also use some dropout to avoid the uh, to avoid overfitting and made some more realistic results uh, i got i got around uh, 0 0.9 uh, validation AU, auc and 0. Uh, 82 uh, validation accuracy, which is uh, kind of good uh, since we use a lot uh, of features and also since the data we used uh, is uh, almost uh, 4,000 rows, which is uh, a lot, uh, a lot uh, not really enough to, to train a deep learning model. So uh, this is the final, uh, the final output, I mean the final, uh, the final MVP for this, uh, for this model. Uh, it's deployed on Mia, and it used these features. Let's maybe choose some, uh, some maybe a successful startup. Uh, it's incorporated, accelerated, funded, of course. The website is active. Uh, the revenue model, let's say, subscription. Uh, customer type B two B. Most of them are B two B. Country, uh, let's say maybe uh, maybe this Estonia. Yeah, maybe Denmark. Yeah, Denmark can, can be good. Industry. Uh, Financial services, business stage, uh, let's say revenue stage. Yeah, can be a successful one. Number of team members, five to ten maybe. Number of competitors, five to ten also. Uh, Percent increase in revenue. Uh, there are actually uh, some negative values and values between zero and one hundred and more than one hundred. Uh, the decision was made that. Classify these, uh, these numbers uh, also driven by uh, by the data distribution mostly. So I just choose more than one one hundred. Uh, the revenue zero to twenty thousand maybe. Um, let's say more. Uh, the startup age uh, zero to five. Yeah, zero to five does make sense. So let's just wait for the prediction. It just takes some good time. Uh, for for Sagas, uh, Sagas question earlier, uh, I guess he asked he asked about if uh, the machine learning was able to predict patterns, maybe or predict other features. It's actually feasible, but not uh, in our situation because we we don't have much data. And actually, basically, uh, machine learning uh, algorithms such as maybe deep learning uh, is able to outperform human performance only when uh, we have a uh, lot of data. I mean, uh, the more data you have, the more you're able to, to extract different features and to, to have better insights on the data. And it's actually more able to create and, uh, and actually uh, get patterns from the data. So this predicted 50%, let's, let's choose maybe another country, Estonia maybe. Also, almost 50. Uh, let's say, uh, uh, maybe more than 100. Uh, let's change. Mm. 
application. So it's like start with page more than five. This is a more, uh, I mean, I, I set the, the, the threshold to 60%, uh, so that it predicts if the startup is successful, if uh, it's 60% uh, 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 probability the, of, uh, when uh, it reach, reaches 60% probability of uh, success. Uh, so that's it for my model. Uh, any questions? Hello? And uh, no, I'm good. No questions for me. Thank you. Same here. <clears throat> Thanks, Adam. Thank you. Okay, is, uh, is there anyone else that would present? I uh, don't know if uh, somebody has already passed. Uh, Christian, will you present something or is there only any other collaborator who is going to present something? I know it's okay from my side, Mario. It's okay from your side. Um, somebody, do you know if someone else will present? that does it for the technical work too okay um if that's all that we that we have so far uh i would like to well uh open uh, questions in general uh so moving on to uh, uh you know questions and answers section uh would like i would like to well uh to see if you have any Questions from uh, from the partners or even from the collaborators in general. If uh, okay, uh, this is uh, Tiago Hera. Sorry if I mispronounce this. Uh, this is his question. Uh, what other properties, uh, pieces of information regarding a startup would you think it would be pertinent to have in order to have the most, the most success? Um, who from the collaborators would like to answer this? Uh, I know, you know, if between uh, Mr. Rudy, Christian, or any from uh, task two, uh, task two team. Hi, uh, I actually think that I can answer that. Uh, information about the team, uh, since it's uh, the most important factor based on the research that the guys made. So information about the team, the team composition, the team experience and the team engagement uh, can really help uh, in, this, uh, in this prediction. This is the most important feature that we think is missed uh, in our models. And there are more other features about which the details are mentioned in the success factors Google Sheet. Uh, those are the features that could be considered, but they were not present in our model because the data about it was not available to us. Uh, the success factors are in the Google Sheet in the document of the cap, this challenge. So um, what, what does a potential roadmap uh, from here looks like? Uh, it appears to me that, you know, we of course should have started and done a lot more data scraping and preparation of a larger database. Uh, you know, it's unlikely that we have, uh, uh, you know, updated or current uh, data around startups within our own networks. So of course we could use Crunchbase or other platforms, uh, but that also sometimes is an issue of uh, scaling and you know validating the data. Um, um, so I, I, I guess one one clear action uh, is to 
have a significantly larger data set, but also with many different uh, variables, um, and then kind of run this process um, again on that data set. Um, or would you do something different? Uh, can I speak, uh, Samudhi? Um, yes. Yeah, okay, th thanks. Uh, from my point of view, I guess that uh, we, can, we can start collecting most of the data, but, but then we can use that data to, to extract patterns and maybe set statistics that may be useful to create more data and synthesize more data that we also uh, use for training uh, other models. So just we use data to create other data, which is kind of useful, right? Yeah, that would be synthetic data generation, right? Yeah. Okay, um, does the Google folder and the GitHub has, I mean, uh, the credentials to access Mia and this marketplace, is that something that's part of the package and we can find somewhere? Or is it connected to your personal accounts? No, it's in the, uh, like if the, uh, the, everything is public, it's not connected to anyone's account. You can have, you have the access to all of the data or, or the documentation that is present. Yeah, okay. Um, I want to mention something. Uh, well, for the for the GitHub, and spe specifically uh, talking about the credentials, uh, right now for the partners you have only the the uh, the writing role. Uh, however, after this after this meeting, I will request you uh, to send me the 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 emails, or, or better to say, the, the accounts. Uh, will require to have a, a, a better role like, like an administrator of the GitHub uh, account uh, for for this project in order to make you uh, admi an, an administrator role. And also on, on Mia's side, if, um, if you prefer to keep the uh, apps accessible only to uh, the partners, that's something that um, can be updated in, in Mia as well. So just um, let the, um, the team know if you'd prefer it to be set up that way for the project close. Yeah, sure. I will uh, get back, back to you. Thank you. Um, let's see. Uh, I don't know if some, someone else would like to ask uh, any other question. Okay. Uh, before I close, uh, I would like to uh, say something to the partners. Um, as, as I uh, said earlier, uh, I will require you uh, to send me like uh, the emails or the GitHub accounts that you will require to make them uh, administrator, administrator roles so I can share it to, to you. Right now, uh, most of the emails that I got from your site are like in, in uh, writing role. So you, you have access to the GitHub files. Um, and then, well, uh, every every single uh, code is already uh, there. Uh, we only have uh, we only have uh, the document of uh, let's say the uh, their last report uh, to to finish. So we only require uh, some time to to edit it, uh, so you can have it. Uh, pretty file documented uh, the, the final report for for this project. Everything else is already uh, well in in the GitHub files or in the Google Drive uh, folder. Uh, so only the the last report that we have to deliver to you is the one where we have uh, left. Um, and also well uh, for for the collaborators, 
uh, from here in two weeks, uh, we have the, the deadlines for the articles creation. So uh, if you have a, any doubts, uh, don't, uh, don't hesitate to, to ask them. Uh, also, if you are, uh, are not joined uh, yet to the, to, the, to, the, to the respective channel, please uh, let me know, tag me. And if you have any question regarding the ethical process, uh, you can um, uh, you you can tag me or tag uh, rehab. So uh, if there is no more or more questions uh, about uh, everything, uh, I would like to well first of all uh, congratulate you, con congratulate uh, the collaborators, uh, tool partners Samantha and the, uh, the partners who for joining us in, in this project in, in particular. Uh, the, the challenge of this project was more, more about the, the research, the, obtaining the, the data sets and, and, and do respectively what we can do with everything that we have found. So uh, this has been a pretty good challenge and uh, looking forward for, for the further steps. Uh, if, if you would like to continue with, uh, with it uh, for, for uh, talking to the parties, if you would like to continue with the project, please co contact uh, Ru or uh, or Harini, please. Uh, so I really appreciate uh, all your efforts that you have done so far, and and also the, the time that you have uh, you have uh, taken for for everything. Really, really appreciate about this. Thank you all. I hope and I hope to see you to you see you soon in a further project in Umdena and so on. Thank you all. Perfect. Thank you, Mario, and thank you, everyone. Thanks a lot. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Yes. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Uh, sure.